Uh, good morning. Uh, it's now 10.50. Welcome to our factual uh, lecture. Uh, before we get started with our discussion today on counselors, I want to make uh, one or two announcements. One is uh, regarding the remaining uh, activities for the course. There will be uh, one quiz on chapter 10. She'll be available uh, not later than this uh, weekend. All right, I'll give you more instruction on the announcement. There will be a quiz on chapter 10. Uh, classes and um, there is also I'll make the homework for chapter 10 available remember uh, final comprehensive exam uh, final exam is uh, next week and it will cover from chapter 1 through chapter 10 there will be more information regarding to that as well so uh, just pay in mind that there is another quiz for chapter 10 and uh, there is another homework assignment for uh, chapter 10, all right? There will be uh, uh, another quiz. Oh, all right, Tierra, I'll respond to your question uh, privately, all right? Uh, send me an email and I'll respond to you regarding your question. I got your message. I'll respond to that uh, later on. I just want to or get started with the, uh, our lecture and allow me to share my screen here so that you can see my uh, whiteboard. This is, uh, this is, this is um, a chapter which I know uh, you have, uh, you have, or you covered in uh, chapter 10 uh, in introduction to chemistry. I mean, to say introduction to chemistry, you should be able to, uh, you should have seen it in intro to uh, chemistry, which is uh, something probably maybe you covered last semester. I want to get started with the car flows on my uh on my uh, whiteboard all right on my whiteboard you'll see that i do have uh i do have the car flows are uh, lined up for you there's um car flows lined up for you which uh i believe uh you covered before one is the poyer's law uh, Charles Law, uh, Avogadro's Law, Ideal Gas Equation or Ideal Gas Law, and Dal uh, Dalton's Law of uh, Partial Pressure. The last one uh, here is, uh, the last one here is on um, K. Lussac's Law. It's not covered, that's why I've highlighted that. Uh, I've highlighted this since we're not going to, uh, look, we're just gonna mention, uh, we're gonna just mention Okay, Lusak's law and what led to that. Uh, now, let's see on the PowerPoint slide, all right? Uh, we'll start with the first one, uh, Charles uh, Poyer's law. All laws, all right, all laws revolve around, uh, you know, firing the uh, pressure. We're gonna be using that, uh, V for volume uh, T. And, uh, and there are four variables which are used to derive the, uh, all the cars law we will cover. And uh, the first one here, Poirier's law, most of these laws, they are credited with the scientists who discovered that, states that the volume of a given gas is inversely proportional to uh, its pressure, or in other words, uh, pressure is inversely proportional to uh, volume, all right? Or uh, volume is inversely proportional to uh, pressure. Uh, knowing the equation and divining or stating the Poirot's law is critical in you know, answering question on Poirot's law. First, you gotta be able to divine. Volume is inversely. This time here, inversely is shown by the proportionality constant here. Uh, now, if we have two conditions saying that V1, all right, uh, V1 
inversely proportional to uh, pressure one, all right? If this is equation one and we have another condition here, V2 inversely proportional to condition two here, say so equation two, we can get rid of uh, the proportionality constant here by introducing the constant. K okay? uh, is uh, uh, a constant, or we call this proportionality constant. In other words, V uh, equals to K over uh, P. All right. Uh, for v, uh, V1 volume one, uh, pressure one, we can say uh, K1, all right, equals to P1 of uh, V1. And uh, in the same way, V2 equals to uh, P2 of uh, V2. Uh, in summary, if K1, this is K, uh, K2. If K1 equals to K2, that means the constant, uh, P1, uh, V1 equals to uh, P2, uh, V2, uh, pressure one, volume one, uh, pressure one, volume one, and pressure two, volume two. What is missing here is constant number of moles and constant temperature among the four variables I give you. We will use or what is outside at the constant, all right? Those are the constants uh, which is not firing in Poel's law, the volume and pressure. You will be presented, the reason why I'm deriving this is you'll be presented with a problem and you have to assign this notation as condition one, condition two. Uh, what I put in bracket in the box is a statement of Poel's law in mathematical form, all right? When you read, all right, when you read the problem, the first item will be, or the first values, the first measurement will be condition one to condition two. You have to, all right? You should be able to interpret the problem. For example, the volume is changed from uh, 25 to 50 ml. You know, volume one, volume two, or pressure one is 760. What is uh, the final pressure? That means you're looking for pressure two and vice versa. I'm not going to uh, spend time deriving, uh, you know, deriving all the four equations. That means that you can get an equation for uh, pressure one, equation for volume one, equation for pressure two, equation for volume two. I don't, I don't have to, you know, I know you know how to derive equation. If you're looking, for example, V1 uh, will be P2 or V2 over uh, P1. All right. So depending on how you assign the values, you should be able to generate an equation to solve the problem based on that. Right. Uh, we will look at an example and I'll show you that. So remember the definition of piles. You got to know that. And I've seen question uh, on carving as well that uh, if you have volume on y axis, uh, on y axis, uh, x axis here, the pressure. Uh, this is plot of, all right, craft versus, uh, I mean, volume versus uh, pressure, volume versus pressure. Here is the volume pressure. They are inversely proportional. If you decrease the volume, pressure goes up. If you decrease or if you increase the volume, the pressure comes down and fights faster. However, if you have volume and uh, one or reciprocal low pressure on this, you'll get a straight line curve. You'll get a straight line curve. That's all um, you need to pay attention. The curves for uh, these laws and the uh, equations, equation for uh, the no, so, so far, this is mathematical relationship. How we ended up with this, show you that this is Poel's statement. And uh, condition one, condition two, how will you be presented with the problem? This is an example, all right? Uh, what will you expect? If you plot 
a graph of volume versus uh, reciprocal of pressure. I just gave you that right here. This will code for a general understanding that what is the graph for? Volume versus the reciprocal. If we change this just to pressure, and then it's just gonna be a uh, hyperbolic, all right, uh, plot. Uh, this is a question on Poirot's law. Uh, a sample of a gas, uh, five moles at one atmosphere, is expanded at a constant temperature from uh, 10 liters to uh, 15 liters. This should be 15 liters. You shouldn't have, uh, we shouldn't have uh, this uh, 10 right here. We shouldn't have uh, the 10 here. This should be 10 to 15. So uh, how you read this, don't get the most confused. You can say, okay, uh, P1 equals to 1.0 ATM. Uh, V1 is 10 liters. V2 is 15, 15 liters. What is the final pressure? So we're looking for P2 equals to what? In the exam, you'll have this. You'll have this right here. How do you find equation to find final pressure? Final pressure here is P2 for pressure. So I'll rearrange this equation Rearranging this equation, making P2 the subject of the formula is given by uh, pressure one, volume one, over volume two. And you have the numbers, you have the numbers. So this will be pressure one is 1.0 uh, ATM. All right, let me just go on this side. Uh, P2 is given by P1, V1 over uh, V2. Pressure one is 1.0 ATM, all right? 1.0 atmospheres uh, times what? Times V1 is 10 uh, liters and V2 is 15 uh, liters. The rest you just plug it in the equation. Uh, Cancel out the units, all right? Uh, one times what are uh, 10 uh, divided by what are uh, 15. That's how you rearrange the equation. 0 0.67, all right? Uh, 0 0.67 uh, ATM atmospheres. That is how you use Poirot's equation to or just question, typical question you will encounter in Poirot's uh, law. Poirot's law. Uh, next, maybe I'll ask you for volume one or somebody might ask you for volume two and five fast. Out of the four, you should be able to uh, derive an equation out of the four identities here. You should be able to rearrange. Uh, remember to change the units to be the same. Probably maybe V2 is in ML and V1 is in liters. It's got to be uniform. It's got to be liters and liters. It's changed from 10 liters uh, to 15. This 10 should be two. And that is, uh, that is, all right, that is the, uh, the answer here is C. Any question on Poirot's law? It is pretty straightforward. Remember, you should be able to state because I was, I may give you, or somebody might give you a question on which one of the following is a statement of Poirot's law? and you are given all these A, B, C, you know, one might be Charles, one might be K. Lusax, one might be, you know, uh, Avogadro's law, and you have to be able to explain. I just mentioned that the volume of a gas is directly, I mean, is inversely proportional to, inversely proportional to uh, volume at constant temperature, at constant temperature. So the number of moles here doesn't really matter. It doesn't change. We don't change the number of moles. That is our Poirot's law. Any question on Poirot's law? 
Uh, remember, all loads revolve around four uh, variables, pressure, uh, volume, temperature, and number of moles. So Charles law states that, uh, Charles law states that uh, the uh, volume of a uh, gas is directly uh, proportional, what? Proportional to its temperature. Let me, temperature in Kelvin, in Kelvin, underline temperature in Kelvin. Sometimes here you may think that it's just like, you know, it was just temperature, the temperature has to be in Kelvin. So whatever you're solving problem on this, remember temperature has to be in Kelvin, directly proportional. Uh, I will derive an equation which, is, which summarizes uh, Charles law. If volume is, uh, if volume is directly proportional to temperature, and I'll use subscript K to indicate temperature must be in Kelvin. If V1, uh, V1 equals to T1, all right, uh, K1, uh, T1, and uh, V2 equals to K2, uh, T2. If K1 equals to K2, that means the same, we can say that uh, K1 equals to V1 over T1, and K2 equals to V2, uh, K2, V2, K2. With that, we can say V1 over T1 equals to K, uh, V2, this should be V2, uh, V2 over T, uh, two. I don't like when it is uh, when it is in this form. If you can handle, that's fine. Uh, I like to just multiply that to give me. This is Charles law. V one uh, T two equals to uh, V two uh, T one. They are commutative, by the way. What I mean by that, doesn't really matter whether you start with, you know, T2, V1, they are the same thing. They are the same thing. So uh, it is not, you know, uh, when I took this course a couple of years ago, I thought, you know, everything has to be 1-1, one, one. all right? In the sense that uh, in Poirot's law, we say pressure 1, volume one here is volume one temperature two volume two temperature that's how it is when you rearrange the equation derive the equation and what is here is uh what is constant here is pressure and uh number of moles and stand for number of moles it's not changing so you got to read the problem see what you know identities you are given to know whether you are you're going to use Charles law or Poirot's law. And just like before, you can derive four equations, all right? Uh, one, uh, two, uh, three, and uh, four. So if I add the first four and these four, that means we can generate eight equations. Now you don't need to memorize all those eight. That will take a toll on you, all right? That will take a toll on you. All you have to know is the main equation, what I put it in here, and that's what I'll give you in the exam, that this is, you know, Charles Law. You gotta know which one you are going to use. You gotta know which one you are going to use. And just like before, this relates uh, volume and uh, temperature, all right? It is directly proportional that it's just a straight line, just a straight line. That if you increase the temperature, all right, I mean, uh, increasing the uh, temperature will increase the volume. It's a sample of a gas, 
increasing the temperature will increase the volume. If you increase or uh, decrease the, all right, decrease the volume, all right, or decrease the temperature by freezing, therefore the volume will change. That's a plot of, uh, this a plot of what? A plot of um, Charles law and doesn't go through zero. Like mine, I, I just so much sure that it doesn't go through zero because you cannot have zero uh, zero gas. Zero gas, there must be some molecules. There must be some moles. So uh, this is Charles law and I've rearranged to look in this form. This is better because I can derive what I'm looking for. If I'm looking for what? If I'm looking for V1, I'll divide everywhere by T2. If I'm looking for V2, I divide everywhere by T1. And like when it is in this form, you may uh, need to step back and derive an equation on Charles law. How will you know that this is a Charles law? It's by when you write down uh, the measurement in a problem. For example, here, uh, helium balloon is filled to a volume of 5.60 liters at 25 degrees Celsius. So this is uh, volume, you can say, call this V1 equals to 5.60 liters. T1 equals to uh, 25, 25 degrees Celsius, all right? Uh, what will be what will be the volume of the balloon? That means you're looking for V2, all right? Uh, V2 equals to what? If the, all right, if it is put in a liquid nitrogen to lower the temperature to 77 uh, kelvins, so that means T2 is 77K. Uh, here you need to change the volume. They, you are expected to know how do I change the temperature from uh, Kelvin, I mean degree Celsius to Kelvin, you add uh, 273 and this is what you will be working with. And that is why it was noted before that absolute temperature. I underline mine to say uh, temperature in Kelvin. So here if you can see that, this is, uh, I meant to say this is 298, 298. When you add that, this is uh, 298K. You need to change the temperature to Kelvin. If you fail, if you use just 25, you'll get it wrong. So in Charles and most, even in ideal gas equation, we're gonna get down to that, temperature has to be in Kelvin. So uh, with this, V2 is given by V1 T2 over V1 over T1. So this is uh, T1, which means V1 is 5.8. 60 liters times T2, which is 77 uh, K of uh, uh, T1 is 298 K, Kelvin. Uh, Kelvin and Kelvin will go, and we remain with the uh, units in liters, unit in liters. So this is 5.60 uh, times what time is uh, 77. Uh, divided by uh, 298, divided by 298, 1.44, 1.44, 1.44, 1.44, 1 uh, four, two significant figures because of 77, therefore 1.4 uh, liters. This is how you use Charles law to find uh, the volume. Uh, next time, maybe you are asked to find the volume of uh, volume two, or temperature two. You've got to recall how do I change the temperature from one scale to another scale. I've seen problems where they ask you for the final temperature and the multiple choices are in degrees Celsius and somebody say, why don't I just work with 
degree Celsius and end up with degree Celsius. No, even if the multiple choices are in degree Celsius, you have to solve with the problem with the temperature in Kelvin, and then you change your final temperature to degree Celsius, and then you pick the multiple choice, the correct multiple choice for your uh, problems, okay? So that is what I wanted you to uh, understand in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, Charles Law, in terms of Charles Law. Any question on, uh, any question on Charles Law? Any question on Charles Law? Let's see. If there's no question, that take care of the first two laws, that is uh, Charles Law. Uh, no, uh, somebody had asked about the five modes. We do not, I think, David, that was the previous, sorry, I, um, I didn't see your question. You do not multiply in this problem right here because the number of modes is constant right here. It is constant because this is, you know, number of moles is the same thing, you are expanding. If the temperature is raised from 10 to 15, this number of moles does not change, you don't multiply. It's just ideal uh, from this equation, P1 uh, V1 equals to uh, P2 uh, V2, constant number of moles and uh, temperature. And that is why in my derived equation, in my derived equation here, the number of moles is uh, the number of moles is constant here. Look, I say the number of moles and the temperature is constant. This is constant, and the number of moles is constant. So how will I know that? Unless you practice uh, until you nail it down, you may try to use a value given in there. But if you write down just the way you have it, you know. Uh, like P1, V1, uh, P1, V1, you will not miss it, you will not miss it. So that was our uh, Charles Law. Any question on Charles Law? Yeah, even in, Char uh, in Charles Law, you may be given something. If you know this is, uh, you know, this is a Charles Law problem and then you know only volume and temperature will be involved in solving the problem. Here, we don't even talk about, you know, constant pressure or even constant number of moles. If you write down the values, like here, on my whiteboard, and then it will be clear to you that this is, uh, this is Charles Law, this is Charles Law. So, uh, Oh, this was at the bottom of my uh, outline for today's lecture. Okay, Lusak Slow talk about the pressure and temperature, but um, in the text, I would have just mentioned, but it did not give us a, a short theory on K. Lusak Slow, but I want just us to see Avogadro's Law, which he pays on K. Lusak Slow, Avogadro's, uh, Avogadro's Law, says that the uh, volume of a gas is directly proportional to the number of moles. Remember we are using N for, remember we are using N for number of moles. And if V1 is directly proportional, we use this, uh, K to remove the proportionality constant N1 and condition two, uh, V2 equals to K2, uh, N2. We can derive K here by saying K1 equals to V1 over what? Over N1. This means K2 equals to V2 over and two, and if K1 equals to K2, that means the same term value does not change, we can also say V1 N1 equals to uh, V2 uh, N2. We can uh, just cross multiply these values here, uh, cross multiply these to get V1 uh, N2 
equals to v2 uh, n1. Doesn't really matter what I say, uh, n2 v1, they are commutative. It's just like saying 3 times 2 and 2 times 3. It's the same thing. What is constant here is, uh, what is constant here is number of what? What is constant is pressure and temperature. You don't see pressure and temperature avocados are low, avocados low. So uh, just like before, uh, we can uh, have what? One, uh, two, uh, three, and uh, four, four equations. So if I have the first four, four plus law, four for Charles law, and four equation for Avogadro's law, that gives us a total of 12 equations, which you don't need to derive. If I know the main equation here, all of them, all right, you'll have the main equation. I, I prefer this over this right here because I can see which one I'm looking for. If I'm looking for V1, if I'm looking for V2, and then I swing around and uh, the other constant. I swing around the other constants to uh, get the right equation, to get the right equation. Before we look at um, example on Avogadro's law, all right, uh, here is a condition you should be able to uh, understand what it means when we say uh, at when we say at STP stand for this is stand for uh, this is stand for standard uh, temperature. And what? And pressure, standard temperature pressure, standard temperature pressure, STP. It's a condition where, you know, you have to uh, set the pressure to be here, 1.008 atm. Uh, this is uh, 298 K and uh, concentration or molarity of a solution, if you are working with a solution, molarity is always uh, work at one molar, one molar. If we have this condition, we talk about standard temperature pressure. So next time you see a problem, STP, you have to have this in mind that if the temperature being referred is 27, uh, 298, Pressure is one atmosphere, and remember again uh, what we talked about. It's the same as seven what, seven sixty millimeter mercury. We talked about this. It's the same thing right here. Or seven sixty uh, seven sixty T O R R is the same thing for pressure at STP. At standard temperature pressure at STP, that means. If the temperature is, if the temperature is 298, if the pressure is one atmosphere, all gases, it's not only limited to helium or nitrogen gas or methane gas, we can even talk about ammonia gas, we can talk about carbon dioxide gas, we can talk about, you know, any gas you can talk about, you can think, right? They occupy the same volume and we call this molar volume. Uh, all gases, all gases, any gas occupy uh, this volume 22.4 liters. Regardless of what type of gas, you see 24.2, 24.4, uh, 22.4, this is called the molar volume. It, uh, at one atmosphere. I think this should be 273. This should be 273. Let me take back that. Not 25, but uh, 273. Okay, I meant to say that. 270, what? Uh, 273. Because of uh, temperature. Zero. If you add 273, it's just 273. 
and uh, any gas, any gas occupy this at standard temperature pressure. These are the condition at STP, condition at STP. Oh, well, uh, we can deviate mostly from ideal. Uh, ideal gas at STP, we're talking about molar at STP. The point here is they are asking you that which one is deviating from 22.4 uh, liters. And uh, if you look at this, uh, you have to only to look at the values. If I look at chlorine gas is deviating from 22.4. The rest is closer to 22.4, 22.4. And uh, the correct answer for this is chlorine gas. All gases occupy the same volume, we call that. So uh, just remember that for, all right, uh, remember the condition of the STP. Let's see, uh, ideal gas equation, uh, ideal gas equation, this solve, uh, this solve, or involve the four variables, all right? Ideal gas equation involve all the four. Remember the pressure, volume, and temperature. V, P for pressure, N for number of moles, and temperature for what? Temperature for, you know, Kelvin. So this is called ideal gas equation. N R T P V N R T. It's just combining the first three equations. This is Boyle's law, Charles one of Gardner's law. We derive the ideal gas law from the three gas laws we have looked at. Uh, you know this. Uh, the R is called universal, universal what? Universal gas. Uh, cast constant. This is universal cast or uh, this is gas uh, constant. And there are five numerical values. There are five numerical values. I'm going to see that down the line. But for or uh, in gas laws, this is the numerical value for I don't expect you to memorize. I will give you this if need be, but if you are doing the homework, you have to uh, refer to the relevant section chapter in the text, all right? And the unit is in liters times atmosphere. This is ATM, unit for pressure over uh, mole times uh, Kelvin. Pay attention to the units for universal cast constant. I see the pressure is in atmosphere, so this will be this will be in ATM. Always pressure will be in ATM. So if you are calculating the pressure, it will be in ATM first. Or if the problem will call for using ideal gas equation and the pressure is given in other units, you have to change to atmospheres fast before you plug it in ideal gas equation. You may be given pressure in atmos uh, in millimeter mercury, in pounds per square inch, you can change to it because of the cast, uh, the universal cast constant which has the atmosphere in it. If you look at this always, this one always will be in liters, in uh, liters, all right? This one has to be in later, so you can change that to later as well. If you look at the mole, will just be taken care of by N, and K stands for temperature in Kelvin, so this should be in Kelvin. Uh, you have to change the pressure to atmospheres. All right, uh, temperature in Kelvin. 
no one will ask you to find r. Of course, r is given. So what you can be asked in ideal gas equation is what uh, here is, you may be asked to find pressure, given the other parameters. You may be asked to find volume. You may be asked, you know, to find uh, maybe the number of moles, uh, given other condition, maybe are given the, or maybe are asked to find the temperature. Maybe put four here. Given the three, you should be able to find the fourth one in ideal cast equation. Uh, there will come a time where you will use uh, maybe uh, joules per mole times Kelvin, whatever you're calculating energy. Uh, these other ones, they are not, you know, uh, relevant to us, but what you will be using in chapter 10 is this liters times atmosphere of a mole or per mole times Kelvin. That's what I have on my whiteboard here. This is called the universal gas constant, which is used in ideal gas equation. And remember always to change the volume to uh, liters, change to liters. How will you know that this is an ideal gas equation? You have to write down what you are given so that you know what, you know, which equation you are going to use. For example, let's see this one, if it is ideal gas equation or gas law. I know we have talked about, you know, uh, different, uh, different laws. How will we know that this is not Charles law? How do we differentiate that? Let's write down the values and you will see if it is, you'll try to use Poil's law and it's not gonna work. The temperature of a sample of a gas, uh, this is methane, all right, uh, CH4, this is methane gas, 10.34 uh, grams, it's a molar mass, I mean not molar mass, but grams, the mass, this is the sample of methane. In five, so I know V, even if you try to say V1, let's say just V, you're trying to see if it's Charles law or Pearl's law, uh, 50.0 uh, liters at one atmosphere. If you say P1, try to see if it's going to work with uh, Poil's law. 1.33 ATM. All right. We are looking for temperature in. If you look at this temperature in uh, temperature in degrees Celsius, if I look at the variables given, it's not going to work with the uh, Charles law. I need to have at least V two or you know more than one. It's not going to work with Poil's law. So you have to uh, plug it in. This is clearly ideal gas equation, and like I say. The temperature has always to be in what? In Kelvin, but they want us to express the final temperature in degrees Celsius. Uh, having said that, if we're looking for a uh, temperature from PV equals to NRT, all right, uh, temperature in Kelvin, temperature in Kelvin is given by PV over uh, NR over NR. I'm dividing both sides by uh, NR. I'm dividing both sides by uh, NR. So that NR and NR, to get the temperature in Kelvin, get the temperature in Kelvin. Do we know the number of moles? It's not going to be always, you know, straightforward. They expect you to apply previous knowledge you learn elsewhere. How do I find the number of moles? You know, and number of moles is given by mass over molar what or molar mass over molar mass. And there's a reason why we are given this that what if you want to use uh, dimensional analysis is 10.3 uh, 10 four grams of CH4 uh, times one mole of what? One mole of CH4 over 16, all right? 12, if I want to really get a molar mass of 1.01 uh, 1 .01 times four, 
plus uh, 12.01. Now uh, 4.04 plus 12.01, 16.05. This is 16.05 grams of CH4. What I'm doing here is uh, dividing it, uh, I mean, finding the number of moles of methane in 10.34. Number of moles is 0 0.644. This is the number of moles. With that, you know, V uh, temperature in Kelvin will be now given by pressure, which is 1.33 atm times volume is 50.0 liters PV over N. N is 0 0.644 uh, number of moles times R, which is 0 0.0821 uh, uh, liters times atmospheres uh, over mole times Kelvin. If you look at the unit cancellation here, I'll cancel mole and mole here will go, liters and liters will go, atmospheres and atmospheres will go, and uh, you multiply what you have at the top, 1.33 times 15 uh, divided by 0 0.64, 0 0.0821, and I see it is 12, 12, 65.6. Uh, this is Kelvin. But the question is asking in degrees Celsius. In degrees Celsius, this is given by 270, uh, K minus 273.15. So I subtract minus. 273 .15. 9, 90, uh, 2, so 273, 273, 9.92. 9.92, 2.73, 12.65, Yes, it should be 992, there must be a mistake here. This is 992 uh, Kelvin, 992 Kelvin. From ideal gas equation, ideal gas equation, 1.33 is all for pressure, you multiply that. So you got to rearrange the equation. Use ideal gas equation to find the volume temperature, you subtract that. So it's not going to be obvious. I know you are wondering, where did we get this? You are expected to apply what we learned earlier on in terms of our temperature confession, temperature confession. Any question on ideal gas equation? Ideal gas equation, remember to change the temperature to Kelvin. Remember to use uh, pressure in atmospheres. If you are given in other units, you need to change that so that when you apply the equation, it's going to work uh, well. You don't need to memorize this number. I'm just going to give you, I use 821, you can use 826 depending on what you are given. That is ideal gas equation. I will not solve uh, you know, all problems uh, relating to how to find the, uh, in the, this one we looked at, we were looking for temperature in uh, in degrees Celsius. We had to find in Kelvin first and then we change to degrees Celsius. 
probably next time you may want to find, you know, the number of moles, or you may even ask the mass. Once you know the moles, all right, you can find the mass. And this is an example on how you can also use ideal gas equation. It sounds, you know, complicated, but if you know uh, what you are looking for, it is going to be straightforward. Let's see, uh, here is an example also on how ideal gas equation is used. In case you didn't know, in, your, uh, in the airbag, this is the compound. This is the chemical compound in the airbag. And the engineers, all right, they know the volume of an airbag. And with that in mind, volume of an airbag, they can figure it out using the stoichiometry. How much grams of sodium SI should be placed in an airbag so that the nitrogen which inflate the airbag does not over inflate and then it's just burst and then doesn't save any life. So this is a typical application of our ideal gas equation. So in the future, next time, tell your friends, oh, they use ideal gas equation to figure it out, you know, how much gas. And in this case, the gas is nitrogen gas. This is responsible for inflating. So mole ratio here is two to one, uh, uh, I mean two to two to three. And what mass of sodium SI, this compound, is required to produce 40 liters of nitrogen gas at 25 degrees Celsius and 763. This is ideal gas equation. There are some calculations you need to do first before you apply the ideal gas equation. Ideal gas equation is PV equals to our NRT. What are we looking for? What mass? At the outset, there is no relationship between mass and anything on the ideal gas equation. The only thing is uh, you have to find the number of moles. Once you find the number of moles N, there, this is an independent equation. Mass in gram of molar what? Of molar, molar mass. Which means mass equals to number of moles times uh, molar what? Molar uh, mass. Uh, this setup right here, the one I do have here, you know, this one, I, this two equation is previous general knowledge you learn elsewhere, either introduction to chemistry, and we talked about at the beginning of the semester. Once we figure it out, the number of, we will use ideal gas equation to find the number of moles. Once we find the number of moles, we multiply by the molar mass of sodium SI, sodium SI. So N, all right, N is given by BV of uh, RT. What is pressure? Pressure in this case is 760. We got to change to, uh, we got to change to uh, atmospheres. Remember what I said earlier on? 760, this is an equivalent statement. T-O-O-R-R -R is equivalent to 1 ATM. 1 ATM, uh, I'm changing the pressure to atmosphere. So 760, 760 divided by, uh, no 760, 763, 763 divided by 760. This is 1.0 uh, 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 4 is uh, ATM. I change 763 to atmospheres because that's what we need to use right here for atmosphere. Uh, temperature, uh, do we have the volume? Yes, volume is already in uh, 
40 ml, so this is correct. This is 40.0 liters. And temperature here is, uh, temperature in Kelvin is 225 plus uh, 273. This is 290, what, 298K, 298K. So with that, we say 1.00, all right, 1.004 uh, ATM times volume in liters, 40.0 liters over R, T, that's 0 0.08, 206 ATM liters times atmospheres. This is liters, uh, liters times atmospheres uh, over mole times Kelvin times uh, temperature is 298 or 298K. And uh, K and K will go away, all right? Atmosphere and atmosphere will go away, liter and liter will go away there we are remaining with more. So if I multiply the top part, all right, 1.004 uh, times 14, uh, uh, all right, uh, divided by what? 0.08206 divided by 298. Uh, I have 1.6 uh, uh, four uh, two moles. These are the moles of uh, sodium aside. And uh, three. What is the molar mass of sodium aside? You'll have you'll have the periodic table, but I'll allow you to use your cell phone or whatever you have to give me. We all over have to participate now. Just help me with that. I know I can do that. But what is the molar mass of sodium acid? This one, we want to know how many grams by molar mass. Google out molar mass of NaM3. It will give you right straight up. Tierra, what is the molar mass of sodium acid? You can Google out. I'll allow you to Google out. Somebody to help me. I know I can do that, but I need you to do. All right, thank you. Thank you, Aaron. So with that, on my whiteboard, this file we will convert to mass using this equation, using this equation. Mass is given by number of moles times smaller mass. All this knowledge we have been learning is compounding. So 1.642 moles of NaN3 times the molar mass here is, you gotta know what can I call it, the top 65.00 grams of Na, N uh, three over one mole of uh, N A uh, N uh, three. I'm using the molar mass here as my last conversion factor so that uh, this will cancel out. Mole and mole will cancel out. I'll remain with the mass 1.642 uh, uh, times 65.00. Okay, and then uh, this is 106, I see it's 106.73 with three significant figures, I think that's 107 using three significant, this is grams of Na and three. Actually using ideal gas equation to, you know, applying other equation to calculate. So that is the uh, correct answer here is E, Please make sure that you are well rounded. It's not gonna be straightforward as you go forward. You are expected to recall what you learned previously. Like I said before, you'll get to Chem 2 and they expect you to know what you learned in Chapter 6 in Chem 1. 
as a matter of fact, the first experiment in CHEM2 lab 2046L is on ideal gas equation. We are going through right now. So any question on ideal gas equation? Of course, if there's problem like this in the exam, you will have less number of question or you'll have longer time. I have to factor in that. It's not gonna be like a two minutes or, or a one minute problem because you need to calculate. If you are not given the molar mass and then you have to find, right, with the periodic table. So correct answer for that is uh, e. Any question on ideal gas law? If there's no question, uh, let's move on to section 10.5. Uh, this is uh, this is on application of ideal cast load to find the molar, uh, I mean to find the density. I know you remember from uh, way back, even in this course, density, everybody knows this. Density is given by mass of what? Mass over volume. Mass over volume. And uh, volume can be, you know, any can be in ML, can be in liters. This is what we learned earlier on. And I know you know this, but we can use ideal gas equation to de determine the density of a gas, density of a gas. You see here mass, we can relate mass to what? To the number of moles, and that is where it's coming right here that uh, N, you can change the mass to number of moles over volume and gives you the density. So we can find the density of a gas using this equation. Uh, density of a gas, we are ranging for ideal gas equation P uh, uh, M of uh, uh, R uh, T of uh, R T where M M is molar mass, by the way, molar. And you ask, use a uh, use, uh, periodic table. If you are not given, you have to use the periodic table. M stands for molar mass. Uh, R is the universal gas constant. And uh, T, let me just write TK, subscript K, this should be uh, temperature in what? Uh, temperature in uh, Kelvin or absolute value, temperature in Kelvin. With this, of course, because of the universal cast constant, liters times atmosphere over mole times Kelvin, this has to be in, uh, this has to be in ATM pressure in atmospheres. If you are given in other units, uh, you need to find that chain to, uh, to atmospheres using the conversion we learned earlier on. So pressure times molar mass over universal cast constant times temperature in Kelvin gives you the density over gas. I wouldn't really ask you to, you know, uh, derive the equation, but this is, this is the equation you will need to find the density over gas, density over gas. And let's see one example on this. How do we uh, change that density? M for molar mass, R for universal cross constant, T for temperature in Kelvin. Make sure you change the temperature in Kelvin. Make sure the pressure in is an atmosphere because of the universal cross constant right here. You see the units? You never change the units. That is why always we change the volume to liters because of the universal cast constant. Always we change the pressure to because of the universal cast constant. So if we know that we can find the volume. Let's see if someone is trying to use the old way of, you know, uh, saying mass of a volume and say, what is the density of ammonia gas in 4.23? This should be liters, by the way. Uh, right here, this should be uh, 4.32 liters. And uh, A at 837, all right, 837 uh, TOR, Arthur's unit for pressure, and for 45.0 degrees Celsius. You've got to find the density in ground. 
if you try to use mass of a volume, we don't know the mass here. And if you, even if you find the chemical form or molar mass of uh, ammonia, you're not gonna get it. So the reason why you are given this. So at the outset, density is given by pressure in atmospheres times the molar mass of a gas over the universal gas constant times temperature in Kelvin, times temperature in Kelvin. That will give you the density. Uh, however, the pressure is not in atmospheres. Pressure is not in atmospheres. So you got to change to atmospheres. 837 T O R R. Where am I getting this uh, equivalent statement? It's from the previous chapter, I think, chapter 10, section 10.2. One, I mean, 760 uh, TOS T R R equals 1 ATM. You don't need to memorize this. I'm just going to give you as an equivalent statement as well. Like one atmosphere equals to this, equals to this, equals to that. Remember at the beginning, one atmosphere equals to this, 760. You're going to be given so that you cancel this and that. What I'm trying to do is convert the pressure to atmosphere. So 8, that is 7, divided by 760. And I have one point. 101 uh, ATM. So I'm done with the pressure. Where is the molar mass? This is again a question of, you know, knowing the chemical formula for ammonia. Ammonia is Na3 like that. I have to find the molar mass of that 14.01 plus, all right, uh, 1.0. 17.04. The molar mass of ammonia is 14.04. This is for 17.04 uh, grams per mole. That is the molar mass of ammonia. We know the uh, universal gas constant is given there. So you don't need to memorize that. What we need to do is change the pressure uh, temperature to Kelvin by adding 273. 273, I have 318, 318. So uh, plugging in this, this will be pressure is 1.0, 1.101 uh, 1 times 17 point uh, zero 0.04, I didn't write the units because of, of space, you know, point zero 0.08206 uh, zero times 3.18, 3.18. I didn't include the units, it's going to cancel out. So with this, this is what we get, uh, 1.101. 1 times uh, 17, 17.04, uh, divided by uh, 0 0.08206 times uh, 318, uh, 0 0.7, this is 0 0.719 uh, grams per liter grams per liter. I don't have the multiple choice for that, but that is a uh, way forward in determining the density of a gas using ideal gas equation. All right, uh, remember M, when I give you the formula sheet and constants, M stands for molar mass. How did I figure it out that it is 17.04 grams per mole? You have to be able to write the chemical formula for compounds done earlier on. I may give you carbon dioxide, I may say methane, you know, uh, 
uh, it's much easier when you are given the chemical formula because you can just use the periodic table, use the periodic table. So in the homework assignment, please uh, pay attention to the units as well, unit as well. Any question on ideal gas law? Of course, if you know, if you're just using straightforward, uh, you know, the ideal gas equation, find the volume, it's, it's much easier. Let's see, uh, last law, Dalton's law of partial pressure states that the total pressure of a sample of a mixture of gases, Dalton's law of a mixture of gases, all right, states that the total pressure is the summation of the partial pressure for individual gas. The PT here stands for the total. P1, P2, P3, partial pressure for cast one, cast two, cast three, and so forth, all right? You can, uh, I know you can get this easily. Uh, however, we can plug in the ideal gas equation that from ideal gas equation, PV equals to NRT, like that, NRT over V from ideal gas equation. So if we know, uh, if we know P1, uh, P total, we can say N1, uh, R T1 over V1, constant is constant, uh, plus N2, T1, or just T temperature is not changing over, uh, over V1 is not changing, the volume is just gonna be the same thing. So what I'm trying to say here for ideal gas equation, P total, depending on how many more uh, gas mixture you have, N2 uh, plus N3 all the way to N times RT over volume. This is uh, another way of, uh, you know, uh, finding the total pressure of a sample of a gas if you are given the masses of gases without necessarily their partial pressures. We can use the number of moles, where N1 stands for the number of moles of gas one, number of moles of gas two, number of moles of gas three, times the universal gas constant, times the temperature in Kelvin, over the volume in liters of the container containing the gas mixture. Other than that, if it is just partial pressures, you can just plug in that equation and get that. How do we use ideal gas equation to find the total pressure? Here we have two gases. What is the total pressure excited by a mixture of uh, 2.00 grams of hydrogen gas and 8.00 grams of nitrogen gas at 273 in 10 liters. We're not going to use, let me use this as equation one here, or equation two, sorry, this is equation two, and this is equation one. We use this as equation one. That means if we know the partial pressure for this, partial pressure for hydrogen and nitrogen, we just plug it in. But we are not given the partial pressure for nitrogen. We are not given. So we will use this equation too by finding the number of moles of uh, nitrogen. So here P total, just P total like that, will be number of moles of uh, hydrogen gas plus number of moles of uh, nitrogen gas, N2, times R T over V. And remember this is K and this is in liters. This is what we are going to use where N over hydrogen gas is given by uh, 2.00 grams of H2 times what uh, hydrogen gas, this is 1.0, um, 
So 2.02, .02, this is the molar mass, 0 0.02 gas. It's not hydrogen atom, hydrogen gas, the molar mass of hydrogen gas is 2.02, .02. one mole of H2. Number of moles of uh, nitrogen gas diatomic is 8.00 grams of N2 times molar mass of Nitrogen gas is 28.02 grams of N2. It's twice whatever the value you get from the periodic table. The number I'm getting here is from the periodic table. We have two nitrogens. One nitrogen is 14.01 times two. One hydrogen is 1.1 times two, 2.2. The same as here, one mole of our nitrogen gas. So this and that will cancel, that and that will cancel. I need to find the number of moles. So this is what? Uh, 2 divided by 2.02. 2 divided by 2.02. I get 0 0.99, 0 0.99. That's number of moles. For hydrogen gas, 8 divided by 28.02. I get uh, this is 0 0.29, 0 0.29. So if I want to find the total, 0.99 plus 0.29. So my total number of moles here is P total. Times temperature, which is 273, of uh, volume in liters is 10 ml, uh, 10 liters, all right? Uh, liters will cancel out with that. And the total volume here, 1.29. Two zero six times two seventy three divided by uh, ten times one point two nine. I end up with two point eight nine atm. This is the total uh, pressure of total pressure of uh, gas. You took note that I had to find the number of moles using this equation, N1, number of moles, N2. If you have three classes, that's what you're gonna do for that and give you the number of moles. Any question on, uh, you know, partial, Dalton's law, partial pressure, you have to remember that, uh, you know, the atomic classes you multiply by to the atomic masses of the periodic table, of the periodic table. It's the same thing as, you know, what we talked about earlier on using the molar mass. That one. Any question? Uh, now, still on uh, Dalton law of partial pressure, I want to look at uh, what we call mole fraction. You will see this again in chem to in details. You will cover this. And mole fraction is a uh, mole fraction. You know what fraction is, right? It's something, uh, two things, the ratio of two things. Mole fraction of cas X is given by a uh, number of moles of X over total Moles. That is just a fraction. Whatever you are looking for is given by the total number of moles of cas X over, I mean, number of moles of cas X over total number of moles of a sample of a gas. If we have, you know, if you know the chemical formula, for example, in the previous section, if I want to find the mole fraction of hydrogen gas, what, you, what 
number of moles of uh, hydrogen gas in two grams, number of moles of hydrogen gas, nitrogen gas in eight grams. If I want to find the mole fraction of hydrogen gas, it will be the number of moles of hydrogen gas in two grams over the total moles. Likewise, for nitrogen gas, well, how many moles do I have? Find the sum of the two, and then you put that will be the mole fractions for each gas. We can uh, we use this italic x for uh, mole fraction of gas x, moles of compound x over total number of moles, which we call n1 here. Let's relate to uh, let's relate to uh, partial pressure for cast one over the total pressure, all right, still on partial pressure, equals to more number of moles of uh, cast one over total number of moles, which is actually mole fraction. This is actually mole fraction. All right, which is, uh, you can use to find either number of moles of mole fraction, this is equation one, or, uh, we can write this as P1 uh, NT total equals to PT total of uh, N1, where N1 stands for mole fraction one, uh, N2 mole fraction two, N1 mole fraction two, all right? So uh, this can be, you can use this to find the mole fraction in a problem, mole fraction over the total. With that, let's see how we use this equation to find the mole of a given gas. A gas mixture, all right, uh, has nitrogen gas and carbon dioxide gas, has a total pressure of eight atmospheres and contains 12.0 uh, moles of gas. When we say moles of gas, that means nitrogen and carbon dioxide adds up to 12.5 moles. You see, when we say a gas mixture, that means we have this and that. That means the total number of moles is 12.1, 12.5 moles. I know this is a gas, this is a gas, but we have to say nitrogen gas, we have to say carbon dioxide gas. But when we say gas mixture, we are referring with that. Now, if the partial pressure of nitrogen gas is 3.69 atmospheres, how many moles of uh, CO2 are in the mixture? This will call for using partial pressure equation. That uh, partial pressure for, all right, since we are given nitrogen, I'm just gonna write nitrogen here, N2, over P total, equals to, this is where the mole fraction comes in, mole fraction of uh, N2 over uh, N total. This should be total right here. So I'm just gonna have uh, total right here. Gonna have total so that uh, it will give us the value for uh, number of moles. We will get the number of moles of nitrogen, number of moles of nitrogen. Partial pressure for nitrogen is 3.69 3.69 atmospheres over the total pressure 8.00 equals to number of moles of uh, N2. We don't know this, that's what I'm looking for. Over total number of moles, 12.5 which means N2 equals to N2 or nitrogen. This is uh, nitrogen here. This implies that, uh, this implies N, N2 like that is given by 3.69 times 12.5 over uh, uh, 8.00 to find the number of moles of uh, nitrogen. Uh, 3.69 uh, times 12.5, uh, and this gives me 46.125 divided by eight, and R5.1, R5.76. 
five. These are the number of moles. Therefore, M, which is uh, for nitrogen gas, is point seven seven. These are the number of moles of mm, nitrogen gas. Therefore, number of moles of uh, number of moles of CO two equals to uh, twelve point uh, five minus uh, five point seven uh, seven. So minus twelve point five, and I. Uh, 12.5 minus uh, 5.77. I have 6.73, 6.73 moles of uh, CO2. If you know the number of moles of CO2, I mean uh, moles of nitrogen gas, you subtract from total. Remember, we are looking for number of moles of CO2. If we know the number of moles of nitrogen gas, we subtract from the total. This is making use of uh, Dalton's law of partial pressure, all right, uh, to figure out the number of moles of uh, a gas, and then we subtract, just report around that. Any question on this? Any question on Dalton's law of partial pressure? Well, let's see. Uh, how many minutes do I have? Uh, 16, 15 minutes. Here is another example on Dalton's law of partial pressure. If uh, CO, carbon monoxide, is five grams, and uh, five grams of carbon dioxide were placed in 850 container 60, the partial pressure of uh, CO in the container was what? Partial pressure. five grams, the partial pressure of CO2. How do we find that partial pressure for CO2? You have to rearrange the equation in such a way that you get that uh, the number of moles of CO2. Number of moles of CO2. You will use the number of moles to find the total number of moles. You have to use this to find the total. You will use this P total is given by uh, N1 plus uh, N2, uh, P or uh, RT over V. This will give you what? This will give you the total pressure. Once you get the total pressure, you will now come back and use P1 and two to give you the total number of moles. Of course, the temperature is given right here. You are given the volume, you got to change that to liters. This will give you the total pressure. And then you're gonna say uh, the partial pressure of CO2 in that, all right? If you, once you get the number of moles of CO2, you can get P of, uh, P of, look, P of CO is given by the mole fraction of CO times what? Times the P total. You're going to use this equation. I don't want to uh, spend time here. You can do this. The reason why we are using this is because of uh, this equation right here. This equation here. The Partial pressure of a gas is given by mole fraction of that gas times the total pressure of a gas. So total pressure for that gas is given by, all right, 
is given by the number of moles of uh, CO and carbon dioxide. We know the R constant, we know the temperature, all right? Uh, and the volume change that to later, it will give you P total and then V of CO2 is the mole fraction of CO2, of CO times the P total is gonna give you that. What I want to, uh, all right, what I want to, uh, we get uh, 10 minutes. What I want to do is uh, I'll stop here today. I don't want to rush through. We'll remain with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of, uh, I think section eight, uh, 10.8 and 10.9, which it shouldn't take long uh, next week. What I want you to, do is do the homework assignment. The quiz will cover up to 10.6 on this. We will meet again next week, all right, uh, on Tuesday, which will be a small section before we take the exam on uh, Thursday, all right? Any question? If there is no question, uh, I'll see you on uh, Thursday. The class is dismissed. We will meet again uh, same time. Please be on the lookout. I'll send you the I'll send you the uh, information regarding the quiz, which will cover up to section ten point six. Thank you. Have a great day and uh, peace. Safe. See you again uh, next.